Wakey, wakey. We're waking up on Sunday morning. How's your morning going so far? Um, d- do you want the happy answer or the truth answer? Are you up loud enough? Can you hear yourself? I-, I can't hear anything. You can't hear? Well, I can hear a ton of background music, but I can barely hear myself. Or you. Trace your headphone jack. How about now? Oh, that's better. Better? Oh, so much better. Good? I can hear. Are we good? Are we good? We're Are we good? good? We're okay, good. we're good. Okay. We're good. But yeah, so, do you, do you want the honest answer or do you want the, the happy answer? Sure. I don't know. I'm still waking up. <laughs> yeah. Is it obvious? <laughs> Holy shit. The honest answer is I literally woke up every hour on the hour last night, so how do you think? <laughs> well, you know... I'm glad that everybody's tuning in with us this morning because it's going to get crazy this morning. You know, everybody's always talking to us about how we need to do controversial topics. It's true. So, this morning, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and I should have, I should have, like, I should have come up with, like, a meme or something, like, that was going to, like, basically, like, uh, I don't know, uh, butt hurt alert like a like a, a little chime a, a butt hurt alert that way you know when i hit the little butt, butt hurt, that shook right yeah that it shakes back and forth you know and rings or with something a, a, like a guy looking over the shoulder smiling or maybe something maybe passing some gas or something <laughs> peeing on an afford symbol um, no um you're hanging out here sunday morning meltdown 8 a.m good morning mofos shauna jade waldrop waking up with us anthony clay from green 13 good morning sir Mr. Brian Peters hanging out with us. There's bound to be more people okay. coming in. Now it's a little loud. Yeah. There, uh, there's bound to be more people coming in to hang out with us this morning. I am, I am 100% sure of that. How's that? That's good. And uh, so what we're going to be talking about today. So one of the things I'm excited to talk about today, just one. Well, we got a brand new douchebag criminals for you, too. Um, but on my side of the fence today... I have a controversial topic that has to do with the workplace and compliments in the workplace. We all know what those are, right? Hey, Siobhan, you have a nice shirt. Thanks. I don't typically wear pink. (laughs) See, that's how that should go, but it doesn't. Never, never, (laughs) never. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to let the Music Familia weigh in, because I think it's always more fun to have the Music Familia weigh in, because, you know, they live the life. They're out there. They see it. They hear it. And and all the people that listen to our morning show are all hardworking, blue-collar employees. Well, for the most part. I know I have my fair share of slackers that are like me, that go to work in pajama pants. You know, but but I still say. I mean, if you can, you should. I still say nobody can pull off a pair of flannel pajama pants like myself. Nobody else can. I, I just you it, it, you do a, have this special kind of way that you wear them. It's just a yeah. You know, I mean, you, I don't know. I don't know. You have to be there to see it. <laughs> anyway, so what have we got going on on your side of the fence today, Siobhan? Oh, you know, we got love news, and well, you stole douchebag criminals for me today, but you know, I'll probably sneak one in. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, and, and of course there will be something about Trump because I always find something, whether it's him directly or, you know, one of his many followers. This morning but, show <laughs> this morning show is sponsored by Happy Sticks. I just want to put that out there. Anybody who wants to Google Happy Sticks, go ahead and do that. Mr. David Sheets, good morning. Photo Nation AP. Mr. Hey, David Sheets. Hey, how was that movie last night with Natty? What'd you watch? I finally watched Wonder Woman, Siobhan. Yeah? Finally. Freaking finally. Like, it's pretty good. Like, I... 
there are some things that, you know, I'm just like, Ur. but that happens with every one of them because I actually read comics as a kid and they always do something to mess the story up in some way well, or another. Well, I think it's because they they realize halfway through the production of the movie when they're, when they cross the first million dollar mark, I feel like that's when they're like, wait a minute, Ur, stop. We need to add some crazy graphics because there's well, some eight year old that needs to have some kind of. We. I think like, it's that whole thing of people expect there to be like some sort of like typical love scene in every movie, and that's normally how they mess them up. Like uh, losers, the love story between the two and losers. That's not how that went at all. Oh man. <laughs> like. So, Mr. Dave Sheets, he said he watched The Post. Uh, I, I fell asleep about 30 minutes in. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't ask you how it was. I'll uh, ask Natty then. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, who knows? Because if he fell asleep, then she may have fell asleep. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It is I've one heard, I wanted to see. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard mixed reviews about it. Um, some, of my, some of my friends and some of my other colleagues... I try to keep my friends, colleagues, and associates separately because when they give me information, that's when you have to remember who gave you the information. Like, was that my friend? Because if it's my friend, I'm going to bust his balls. But if it's my associate, I'm just going to tag him on Facebook and be like, you're wrong! <laughs> and if it's a, like, family member, then, then you know, then it's like balls to the wall. <laughs> like, family dinner every year. Like, hey, you remember when? <laughs> yep. You have one of those, Siobhan? Um, not not really anymore. Yeah. Yeah, not not so much anymore. That's probably a good thing. I don't know, when I hear you talk to your brother on the phone. <laughs> well. <laughs> if he, he's listening, if he's listening, man, I, I, first of all, congratulations. First of all, congratulations for being up early on a Sunday. <laughs> and the only way he's up this early on a Sunday is if the kids are there and awake or if Stacy kicked his ass out of bed. Truth. <laughs> Let's just be real. Truth. It's a Sunday. He ain't up this early. <laughs> Mr. Dave says, I was tired as hell. I was on four hours of sleep from the night before. He said, never trust people's reviews. <laughs> well, I mean... <sighs> I don't know, man. I feel like sometimes you can. I mean, there are some cases in which reviews have been accurate, but a lot of the time I don't. I, I don't, don't feel like people were wrong with Deadpool. You know, like right. there was a lot. I, I, I'll be honest. I listened to reviews before I went to see Deadpool, and I was like, eh. Because I, cause I, I know Ryan. You know, I, I love Ryan. You know, I, great dude, good actor. You know, really, honestly, he's a humanitarian as well. So, I mean, great, you know, personality, but I just wasn't sure. I was like, awesome, a masked, shit-talking action figure. That's all I could think about, was a little doll running around saying, shit, fuck, Like, yeah. and I was like, oh, dude, parents are gonna hate it. And parents loved it! And I was like, so much so that they made a drowning pool, uh, Deadpool 2. Yeah, I heard that they were doing that. Yeah, so I'm excited. We're gonna have to go, maybe do, that, do a review of that or something. Good morning, Jeff Dollar, Mr. Jason Williamson. Uh, so, Douchebag Criminals Love News, some controversial topics today, and, uh, I encourage everybody to call in, man, so what I'm gonna do right now, before I even get started into the show, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the phone number in there, 614-916-6372, phone number is in there, you guys can call live during the show this morning, any topics you guys wanna weigh in on, um, so, comments in a workplace, Siobhan, you know, we're going to be talking about controversial topics. I think that's going to get some shit started. Oh, I'm sure. I think we'll, we'll start that. We'll, we'll, we'll move that towards the later, the first part of the nine o'clock hour. But, uh, so did you see Dennis Rodman? I'm a badass ambassador. Look what I did with Kim Jong Un. I did not. And I'm, I almost feel glad that I did not. Dennis is ecstatic with his friends. Uh, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump are getting along, especially because he believes he played a big part in bringing the peace together. We spoke with a basketball player, Hall of Famer, about North Korea's newfound friendliness with the U.S. in its historic summit with South Korea. And, uh, you know, it's been really secretive the last few weeks mm -hmm. on what's been going on. And, and it's been interesting to watch because, you know, you, you see the news 
talk about whatever, and then you see Don. If you follow Donald Trump on Twitter, then I, you, then I you, just can't. Then you're <laughs> the first person to see the craziness firsthand. Like this is, I started following him just so I could be like. What I thought the about. Fuck? I thought about it. I did. I really did. And then I was like, oh my god! But then my phone's gonna blow up like every twenty minutes when you he know has what? You'd be a dementia moment, no. and is like, oh. No, you'd be surprised. Like, actually, it's really not, so not much. that bad. It's not that bad. Well, then his press secretary is doing her job finally. I think so. <laughs> you know, so Dennis, you know, he's made a few trips over there. Now, excuse me, pardon me. Sponsored by Code Red Mountain Dew this morning. Uh, so, uh, you know, Rodman's made a few trips since June 2017 back and forth from North Korea to here. And a couple of times, uh, what a lot of people don't know, is Kim Jong-un flipped the bill. That's what a lot of people are finding out, and especially people on Capitol Hill, they're finding out that Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un are a little tighter than what it all is on social media. Really now? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, like Rodman's got money, but the fact that Kim Jong-un paid for his flight well, that's uh, you know what I mean. Goes, yeah. I think it goes a little past the whole. That's, I'm a fan of a your special, basketball. That's a special kind of friendship. Oh yeah, without a doubt. That's an expensive flight, and I'm sure that it wasn't just first, you know, business class or whatever. Oh, I'm yeah. sure it was first class flying in style. Here, would you like some food? Rodman flew by himself. He flew by himself. Oh yeah, on a very very small private jet. Yeah, exactly. Flying in style with one but, hostess. And but what did you see the news this week? They're talking about Kim Jong Un not being able to make the flight to the summit himself, so they have to fly to him because his plane is so far out of technological date that they ha he has to refuel every like thirty miles. That's he, crazy. He's got he has the older style presidential plane and, and what it is is it's actually um, flipped. It used to be a war plane and it's flipped into personal entourage plane. So he's just added money to it. But it's so old that they don't make the parts anymore, so he can't update his plane. That's ridiculous. But he Buy won't, a new plane. But he won't right. He'll go and spend all that money on a palace and all you see all right. the lavish <clears throat> stuff going through North Korea North Korea that Nobody's allowed to touch, by the way. Nobody, right. Nobody's allowed to do anything with. But, you know, I, I'm going to make my country look good, but I'm going to fly around in a piece of crap. I mean, the awesome. important stuff. Appearance is everything. I would think that that would also go into <laughs> your plane appearance, but apparently not. Look at me. I can shoot rockets. <laughs> and I have a crappy plane. <laughs> like, you know, I, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is, World peace is good. I can't wait for, you know, everybody to just get along. I think everybody just needs to... Sometimes, I don't mean to be rude, and I'm, I'm going to put it out there, and this is definitely a show, you know, where honesty is always on point. I, I think the world just needs to smoke a fatty and shut the F up. You know? I, I think people just need to stop being offended. I don't know when we got to a point where everybody was like, Wah! Hey, Siobhan, I don't like your pink shirt. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't I don't really understand. I've I've thought about that a lot, especially now being, you know, a parent. Like this is this is not the way the world was when I was a kid. Like people were actually nice to people. Right. And and people actually were considerate of other people and helped other people and stopped and took moments out of their day to do things for other people. And you don't really see that anymore. And the one conclusion I come to every time that I think about it and look back on things and try to figure out where it went wrong, if you will, technology. <laughs> yeah. Technology yeah. has corrupted us into being these mindless bots. It makes me think of Terminator. Uh, no, actually, I was going to be a nicer one, but yes, <laughs> that too. I was thinking Wally, -E, where they all yeah. sit in their chair, and and yeah, like yeah. that's what I feel like we're headed toward. You know, the the, the thing is, yeah, I went there. <laughs> what you gonna do about it? Right. <laughs> what you gonna do? Wait, wrong camera. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> right. No, you know, I mean that my. Uh, uh, I I try to, I try to be open, you know, and it's really hard. People make it really hard. 
when you post stupid in analytical or stupid non-analytical shit on Facebook. Right. A and I know you as a person, and I know that you read half of the article, not the whole article, and that's why you're making a post, because you got instantly infuriated and was like, <gasps> and you went to your social media like everybody else. You realize that that's a form of a keyboard warrior. Oh, hey, um, so I just came across this, uh -oh. and uh, it's local to us, so I'm going to read this yeah. real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so police are searching for a suspect that robbed a McDonald's at gunpoint. Uh, what there's McDonald's? a, uh, Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Are you kidding me? Uh, about an hour ago and they updated it 12 minutes ago. Police are searching for a suspect that robbed a McDonald's at gunpoint in Reynoldsburg on April 11th, 2018, just after, oh wow, why is that so old? What the hell? Why, why is that from so old? Okay, I guess because they just updated it. But um, there is a video, so I'll throw that up there. But just after 10 p.m., the suspect entered the McDonald's on Bryce and Maine. Uh, they say, investigators say, the suspect hid in the bathroom until the lobby doors were locked and then held the store manager at gunpoint to open the safe. Um, <laughs> the manager described the suspect as a black man with an eyebrow piercing. And then if you have any information, there is a cash reward. A call 614-461-TIPS tips. Um, so most likely because they're trying to find this guy is why this was updated or they might have just released the video because there is a video with it. So I'm going to throw that up on the uh, MFP page as well as the Siobhan page so everybody can see that. But uh, yeah, I, I saw Reynoldsburg and that's local. So <laughs> got to let everybody know in case they didn't. I love Jason Williamson's comment. Can't give North Korea jet propulsion blueprints. He would make missiles. <laughs> I think he's a little... This... I, I love I, I love Jason, but I don't know where he's been. I don't know if he's seen social media lately. <laughs> I don't know if he's seen the testing. I don't know if he's seen all that. I I, I love him. I give him I give him crap because he's down in he's down south. Ah, uh, gotcha. Handling all the stuff down there. He uh he's been talking about uh you know the protest, the teacher protest and stuff going on. Damn, Siobhan. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> we have kids watching. My bad. <laughs> People are going to be like, they're going to think that was me. Oh, uh, my daughter does that too. Good God. Like, she has, like, earth rumbling burps at her size. It's crazy. Like, the whole, I feel like her whole high chair vibrates when she burps sometimes. <laughs> like, she looks startled. She goes like this. Dave's bringing the heat already this morning. <laughs> he goes, well, not too many black dudes have eyebrow piercings. It should be easy to find. You know, and, I love and, you, Dave. This is why we've been friends for so long, because I kind of sort of thought that. And, J <laughs> and Jason goes, well, missiles that fly. And I can see <laughs> I can see the emoji that he probably would have threw in there, like his facial expression. Like, yeah, uh. that can fly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Wee, little rocket man. Hey, so did you see Waffle House is in the news again? And oh, it's, not yeah. for, it's not for a shooting. Are you ready for this? White customers only. Black woman says she wasn't allowed to eat at Waffle House in Alabama. A woman was reportedly denied entry at a Waffle House in Pinson, Alabama because of the color of her skin. Jacinda Mitchell took a video last week that showed the doors to the establishment were locked, but there were white people inside. It led Mitchell to conclude that she was refused service because she was a person of color. Hey! And I quote, by the way, are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. This is, this is what I love. I love doing the stories that have quotes because you could just imagine standing in front of this person. They have the door locked and they have customers in, uh, are in there and they're looking at me and they're saying that they're closed. The customers are eating and, and they, they happen to be white customers only. And I'm an African-American. If you didn't see the color of my skin, Mitchell said in the clip. They have people that they're serving, but they're telling me that they're closed. Pat Warner, director of public relations and external affairs of Waffle House, said the company was investigating Mitchell's allegations. Uh, he goes on to say that we have launched an investigation to gather all the facts. Waffle House is a welcoming place for everyone, and we are fortunate to enjoy a very diverse and loyal customer base who do our very best to serve everyone every day. Warner said in a statement to AL.com on Thursday. 
The employee involved should not have locked the front door at all and should have clearly opened the door for the customer when she arrived. Uh, she will get the f uh, we will get the facts and we will get to the bottom of this and take appropriate action quickly. Uh, a black woman claimed that she was not allowed to eat at the Waffle House in Alabama because of the color of her skin. Uh, Mark Walheiser of the Getty Images, and he covered the story for AL. Uh, Mitchell apparently being locked out of the restaurant was the third time this month Waffle Houses came under fire. Uh, and Chikesi, uh Clemens, uh, uh, yeah, I, I can never pronounce his name. Per, uh, uh, Mr. Clemens, we'll go there. How about that? That way nobody gets butthurt. <laughs> Uh, was arrested on Sunday after they allegedly refused to pay for plastic utensils at a Waffle House in Sarah Land, Alabama. Wow. Video footage showed three white male police detaining her. At one point, uh, her top went down and her breasts were exposed. Per, uh, and, yeah, I, I knew I was going to get a look from you, Siobhan. <laughs> and, uh, Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump said at a press conference on Wednesday that law enforcement choked and brutalized a 25-year-old uh, Clemson uh, during the arrest, and Clemson was charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. On the same day, though, you ready for this? Four people were killed and several others were injured when uh, suspected shooter Travis Rankin opened fire at the Waffle House in Nashville. Rankin reportedly suffers from mental health issues. According to the Metropolitan Nashville Police Chief, Stephen Anderson said on Monday, a motive for the attack was, is still unknown. He was charged with four counts of criminal homicide, four counts of attempted homicide, and one count of having a firearm while committing a dangerous felony. He's scheduled to appear on May 7th. And uh, that's going to go on further. But man, you man. know what? I think what is happening, I think the South is just getting to the point where they're freaking tired. They're tired. Yeah. Like, it's the teachers getting screwed. It's the families getting screwed. People are getting robbed. Money's getting tight. Because jobs are getting tight. Things are getting real Well, in the United States. They're not the only ones getting tired of things. Oh, no. Uh -uh. But I think they're the only... I think they're the ones... So... They're, they're probably the ones taking the most action. But there is action being taken elsewhere I, for other things. Yeah, but I think the, the, the most radical action yeah that that's definitely possible you know because yeah we got protesting in florida we got protesting in in, in california yeah, we even we even have people that are throwing rocks at cops and flipping cop cars okay yeah but you know what that dates back to the 70s when the, the last time in history did somebody walk in with an ar-15 to a waffle house and say my my hash browns were burnt and blow up the joint you know, I mean, and and I'm I'm trying to make light on a on a serious subject because I mean, seriously, people were were injured. You know, I I don't know how I feel about the GoFundMe, the money creating, and I don't know how I feel about the dude doing all this stuff out in the media attention. You know, he made a statement initially, his first interview. Um, he said, you know, I I didn't I I didn't think about it. I just I just leapt into action. Right. I just I just did it. You know, I just, I just, there was people that needed me and I just, you know, but as you watch the last few days, the last week of how all this has went, this dude's collecting money, making money, doing this, doing that, you know, and, and I, I'm sorry, but there is a certain level of where I, I tend to question certain people's motives after certain things happen. It's not the action that I'm questioning. It's not the... Because those are split-second decisions, you know? I... Uh, I don't know, man. I just... There's some things you can... You should do in the media, and I think there's some things that should just be left alone, man. That's... Yeah. You know? And, like, he... Uh, he well... He didn't know about his kid. I mean, because... The, the it's it's really about the fact that the media has so much influence and so much power and so much reach and you just it comes down to Carla you. Johnson damn Waffle House you have to you sort of have to be careful about what you allow to be in it because anything that ends up in it can be blown way out of proportion or you know so many worse things crazy man it's crazy I don't know so uh, you want to uh, throw this new spot adam this new calhoun spot yes but i'm having a slight add moment and i just have to say 
Well, one of the things that we should definitely talk about Uh-oh. as far as controversial topics get, go. Get him, Siobhan. Get uh, him. So, and this is semi-local. I mean, it's not local, local, but it's still here in Ohio. So Madison County oh, yeah. um, schools yeah. have decided to allow their teachers to carry handguns or guns in school, on school property, etc. You know, that Wait, whole thing. what the shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. What There's, the shit? There is very much so mixed <laughs> feelings on all sides about it. I bet there's parents that are pulling their kids out of school. It wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't surprise me. I wonder if the numbers are going to drop. Because that's already a pretty small school, if I'm not mistaken. It's not like a huge school. Um, Madison County's not huge, so, you know. They're going to see the results of the PTO meetings. Oh. Crazy man, yeah. Let's talk about that. But yeah, they are they are allowing them. It's it's. Uh, All right, parents, yeah. <laughs> I know you're out there. Get ready. Six one four nine one six six three seven two. Get the number written down. Siobhan, can you throw it in there for me? Uh, if Phil let me. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's weird about phone numbers and such and me a lot in you yeah in well you. It, it's just because there when, we go I got when it. you're logged in you're considered like the you know because so i am it, a man because i am i mean whatever I, I shouldn't say the man that's so sexist <laughs> as i sit here and say that and i'm looking at you when i say that i promise mm-hmm. i'm not looking at your boobs you I better pro- not I be <laughs> my husband will kick your ass i hear he's a mean little asshole he can be yes yeah right on all right, so we're going to get into this commercial from Calhoun Plumbing. Make sure you guys check it out, man. Calhoun Plumbing Incorporated Drain and Sewer Cleaning, family owned and operated. Make sure you call us, give them a call, 614 444 1995, and check them out, calhounplumbing.com. We'll be right back after this. Make sure you guys get ready. We have a brand new Douche by Criminals horoscopes and a lot, lot more. Be right back. Are you tired of overpriced and overweight plumbers spending hours on a job and costing you hundreds of dollars only to find out it's going to cost double? Give Calhoun Plumbing a call. Since 1992, the team at Calhoun Plumbing has been loyally serving the homes and businesses of Greater Columbus, Ohio. Have a plumbing emergency? Calhoun Plumbing will come to your rescue 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A messy plumbing problem won't wait or fix itself. What are you waiting for? Someone is standing by to take your call now. Call 614 444-1995 for your trusted everything you need all in one plumber Calhoun Plumbing military and seniors save 10% off on service calls and no premium rates for Saturday appointments for more information go to calhounplumbing.com or call 614-444-1995 that number again is (laughs) 614-444-1995 
books from ancient flames They labeled you a liar That was just one of many From the woods in your head to your heart to your mouth To the hands that burnt the bridges down From the words so late that you cry out To the words that fill us full of doubt You can never get away from here The places we called our home The only thought left in my head Stupid fire should have never been started Let me tell you a story about the time I had I was down in Louisiana as a Cajun lad I was running from the cops trying to make ends meet I was stealing dirty water down on Bourbon Street And Baton Rouge was a girl who looked real mean Little did I know she was a voodoo queen I took her home that night to cast a spell I woke up in the morning and she looked like hell Cajun Saint on the run Mississippi River, here I come, Cajun Saint on the run. I'll be home when I'm done. Deep in the swamp where I lost my mind, the steward log cabin that they couldn't find. I was buried like a crawfish underneath the mud, and down came the rain and it started to flood. I floated down the river to see my queen And she was dealing dirty water in New Orleans Little did I know that queen of mine Had the cops waiting for me at the parish line Cajun Saint on the run Mississippi River, here I come Cajun Saint on the run I'll be home when I'm done Long story short, I'm still on the run Burning bridges, going crazy over what I've done When the saints come marching in I'll be home again When the saints come marching in I'll be home again When the saints come marching in
Music Familia. Welcome to Sunday Morning Meltdown with Ant Man and Siobhan. You like that Calhoun plumbing commercial? I did. Different. It it actually I I have to wonder though because I know a family by the last name of Calhoun and and that I know of it's not that common so I almost wonder if they're related. I don't know because everybody in your world is related. I know it's crazy. Like my world and how small it is is really ridiculous. Like everybody, people will probably be like, "You're being a dick right now." I'm like, "No, I'm serious." Like Like, she really is. My like, it's crazy how much my world ends up connecting in some way or another. Like people that are like here and here end up here and here, and it happens all the time. It's crazy. Like, holy shit! (laughs) Damn. So, it's been an awesome morning so far. It's 8.37. Good morning to the music familia. I feel like it should be later. You know, I woke up and the sun was bright and shining this morning, and I was like, man, I'm so happy to be alive. I'm like, you know, I don't know. It's just like one of those days, man. I want to give a huge shout out right now, because I know they're going to be wondering, but we have a lot of people in 9 o'clock. We're doing horoscopes, so make sure you get your birth dates and your months ready Get ready to throw them in, all right? I want to give a good morning who... These people might not be listening, but I want to just give them a happy birthday anyway. Lorraine Hackett, you know, the mm-hmm. awesome 1970s... Amazing lady. Yes. Very intelligent The well-versed. former Playboy Bunny, Lorraine Hackett. Happy birthday, ma'am. Uh, Linda Brandon, happy birthday today, 71 years old. A very beautiful 71 years old. Hope you're having a wonderful day, ma'am. Enjoy that sun. Kathy Baker today, turning 55. Happy birthday, ma'am. Hope you're having a great day and have a great rest of your weekend. I know they're doing a couple farmer's market thingies around. You called me yesterday and was like, yeah, you they need was to like, get down there. It was like a street fair or something. Yeah. I don't know, but it was it was pretty cool. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff there on High Street in Clintonville. It was, yeah, right by the Kroger on North Broadway. A whole bunch of little tents set up, people selling stuff, honey, scones, Flowers, randomness. Local fat kid foods. Oh. Yeah. I'm such a sucker. Too bad it rained on their parade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't rain too bad, I don't think. I don't know. I was in Delaware, and it, it did. I, I mean, it did rain there, so. Yeah. All right. So what do you got for us, Siobhan? Well, uh, I just came across this, and as a parent, I feel I need to read this because holy effing. Yeah. Okay, so there's a dad that's outraged by a sexually explicit question on his daughter's homework assignment. Uh, so Omar <coughs> Omar Austin had to double take, do a double take when he spotted a, spe- a sexually explicit question on his teenage daughter's homework assignment this week. This needs to be seen. What the hell is going on in our schools? The Florida father asked as he read the question aloud in a video posted Facebook on Wednesday. The multiple que- uh, choice question reported, reportedly read, uh, Ursula was devastated when her boyfriend broke up with her after having sex. To get revenge, she had sex with his best friend the next day. Ursula had a beautiful baby girl nine months later. Ursula had typo blood. Her boy- ex-boyfriend has uh, AB blood, and his best friend is type A blood. If her baby daddy is her ex-boyfriend... What could be the possible blood types of her baby? Uh, what could the possible blood types of her baby not be? Uh, as of Friday evening, the video has been viewed more than 500 times and sparked a handful of comments from concerned residents. Some actually gets someone actually gets paid to make this test. I'm assuming someone checks the wording of the question. What happened to common sense? One Facebook user wrote. Wow, just wow, another exclaimed. Austin told First Coast News in Florida he immediately contacted the principal at Westside High School in Jacksonville to flag the inappropriate question that was on his 11th grade daughter's practice test for her upcoming anatomy exam. Uh, (laughs) Wow. Yeah, like it makes my blood boil as I'm reading it. Yeah, And it only gets better. Uh, This was a district-generated worksheet that her teacher just printed offline, and it was given to the students. Austin explained to the local news station, I want it to be acknowledged, I want it to be reviewed, and I want it to be changed. Uh, Duval County Public Schools said in a statement obtained by First Coast News that it agreed the question was highly inappropriate and confirmed it was not part of a district assessment. Uh, Immediately... 
Upon being made aware of the matter, school district, uh, school and district leaders began conducting a review of the situation. Appropriate and corrective action will be taken, the district stated. We encourage parents to contact their school leaders directly if they have any concerns about their child's school and an instructional experience so that we can immediately work to problem solve. Austin called the biased question sad as a uh, de- sad and a disgrace to our education system. He said he hopes the school will be more careful in the future and thoroughly read every assignment they pass out to high schoolers. I think that we can do better, he added. The school district said they don't believe the uh, inappropriate worksheet was passed out to any other schools, but they are still investigating. All right. Phone lines are open. 614-916-6372. You guys can call in. Weigh in on this topic. I want to hear from the parents. I just, I mean... I can't even believe, like, it was a district thing. It wasn't even just that teacher created it. Like, the teacher pulled it from the site for the district. That means that a hundred or more people had to say yes for right. it to make like, it in front that, of those I kids. I mean, it means that some, like, some serious people in positions of power had to say, oh, that's okay. Or <laughs> look at other ones, maybe pick, like, five or one each page, and that's how they, like, clearly they didn't read everything. Or if they did, they really need to reevaluate what they think is a good idea yeah oh my gosh i would i would go i would go ape shit if that were my kid like i would lose my effing mind (laughs) yeah (laughs) like i'm 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 halfway losing my mind just sitting here yeah yeah it just i don't know like that parent switch just went no you know I i mean i don't i don't really i don't really see I, I get what they were trying to do with the question. and I No, that's bullshit. Because like, you know no, what? There's I so mean, many other ways they could have. Exactly. You no. could have used so many other options I, of ways for them look, to figure that out. Look, I, I just want to put this out there. So I don't know. if I, I'm an 80s kid, all right? And I've, I've seen, you know, my school system, my school system, you know, was very considered small town compared to what's going on here and whatnot. But you know what? The one thing that we were not was stupid and the one thing that another thing that we were not like we were not afraid to try new things you know what i mean and i don't think that today's society needs any help whatsoever and i think that 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 is a violent shove into i mean oh god there's kids that don't even that, 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 that that's not even on their mind like, right i mean so she's in, with she life. was in 11th grade oh. so i well, mean 11th grade I, I mean yeah at that point i remember you, sex ed my sex ed class was in seventh eighth right grade. right but that was the only class where that kind of thing was talked about and i remember and i remember the whole condom on the banana <laughs> You know, <laughs> like I ain't afraid. I, I look if my gym teacher's listening. I love you. I'm sorry, like Miss Gray. I love you, but you know, and and, and look, and, and as a grown as a, as an adult, like now, 34 years old, I look at it, and you know, I look back at it, and my both my female gym teachers that I had growing up were gay. But you know what? They could kick a mean kickball, dude. <laughs> and 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 the, the thing about it was is that you know, growing up, I I never nobody we didn't talk about it. We didn't. It wasn't a hey, Miss Gray's girlfriend. Like no, right. you know. And 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 be and let's be real here. Like they they didn't make any markers or put themselves out there. You know, they weren't making out in the library in front of everybody you know what i mean with their with their with their partner and i think the one the greatest thing about those two women in my life was you know they prepared me for what i would see later in my life and i didn't know it then i just didn't know it then you know but when i got older and i looked back at it i was like you know like i i did have now that i think about it i, I did have some some very influential uh, gay people in my life that showed me you can be gay and still be powerful, still be influential, still do positive things, still have a happy right. life. You know, there's no reason to, to stand on the side and point a finger. 
And I think that's what we do with a lot of things, Siobhan, these days, is we just stand on the corner and we'll just point a finger and just say, oh, and, and we don't, we don't try to understand. I, I, I don't know. I always go back to the whole what we don't, uh, uh, you know, we're, uh, Americans especially, or, or United, Amer- United States Americans as a whole, I think, are um, what they don't know scares them. Right. You know, and, and I think that is what propels, propels a certain type of attitude sometimes without even rhyme or reason. You know, and, and how many of those people do you think throw out that, like, the, like that story with the, the school, you know, doing that test? I mean, how many people did that get through? How many people were like, this is okay. This is going to be great. Like, and I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to hear the excuses on why this is going to be educational for our kids. Right. And I would love to hear at least the one person that was like, um, I don't know if this is a good idea. Right. Because there, I mean, there had to be somebody. Somebody had to go, mm, this might not be the best thing to do. He goes, uh, and Jason goes, what does baby daddies have to do with anatomy, though? Right. And and, and and he goes, in the learning sense. Right. I was like, uh, well, and, and that's child the, support's that's, expensive. That's, that's what you learn. the other thing. Like, the <laughs> language used. Baby daddy. Right. Yeah. Really? The ebonically challenged school system trying I mean, to educate our on. students. Yeah, like, I, I kind of just was like, well, <sighs> why don't we... Why don't, in the spelling test, what we're using F. What is F for this week? Food stamps. How do you spell food? How do you spell food stamps? <laughs> Bonus points if you can spell foreclosure. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, you know, like I remember spelling tests and I remember all kinds of stuff that had nothing to do with that stuff right mm-hmm. there. I was like, I was in 11th grade. I'll be honest. When I was in 11th grade, I was working towards going to college because I was tired of being sitting in a seat in school. I mean, I went to Career Tech Center, you know, to get my ass out of the right. seat because I was tired of the, the antics. There's no reason. I understand the learning is necessary, but there's no right. way you're going to tell me, hey, two molecules make a cell and that cell is in your body and you got a billion of them. Sweet. If I take that information to McDonald's, will that get me a Happy Meal? Probably freaking not. <laughs> Probably freaking not. Why don't you teach me something I can actually use? Like, I understand it's important to educate and be a part of it, but when you, I feel like there's a part time in your life where you hit a spot and you're like, eh, I know I learn more. I know I want to learn more. I know I want to be involved more, but this isn't how I need to do it. This is how I need to do it. And you change tracks to try to train yourself and educate yourself in the way you know how to learn and whatever. I don't, I don't know. I, I just think it's interesting to sit back and watch Americans. Like, because other countries don't have these issues. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Oh, oh man. 8.49. Oh. I love Mary Kaufman and Columbus Events Group, by the way. She always posts. Yes. She always posts the awesomest things in the morning. She posted this morning. Finally, uh, uh, it's a meme uh, from Now That's Funny. Uh, finally, the fourth ape. He is the sum of the first three. He sees nobody, hears nobody, and speaks to nobody. You know, I can agree with that. So many levels, man. So many levels. So have you uh, have you seen um, the uh, new page that was created from Rick Anvil? Uh, I, I don't know if you I don't know if you've been invited yet to that page yet. I, it, ha- it, I don't know. I have not actually been on Facebook very much as of late. I've been a little busy. Jaw dust familia. Nice. Very proud. Very nice. Proud. Thank you, Mr. Rick Thank Anvil. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Matthew O'Connor and Tom Corsi are also members of that awesome, awesome club. So we have a little bit of a club of our own, I guess you could say. You can go to facebook.com forward slash music familia productions, like our page. Just over 500 likes. Thank you so much for everybody who got involved with that and got behind us to push that. Good stuff. How's your morning, Siobhan? It's getting better. I've drank about half of my energy shot at this point, so I'm, I'm starting to feel more awake and alert and less, ugh. 
<laughs> hey, has anybody went and clicked on the happysticks.com yet? I don't know if anybody in the chat room has. I know they don't want to leave the show, so uh, I don't know if they can have the possibility. I know Dave can because Dave's got oh, a huge... Oh, hey, look. My mama's in the yes. chat. Yes. Good morning, Miss Cam Grady right there. Hi, so, mama. So some of our segments this morning are sponsored by happysticks.com. Fun stuff right there. So... Well, let's see. Ten till nine. You want to throw something at him, and then we'll come back. I, I was gonna say I got I got this uh, real quick story right here, and then we can uh, do a sponsor and and, Word. and come back for horoscopes. Yeah. Uh, so something local to us uh, in Chillicothe. There, and this is uh, a couple of days old, but I think that it's worth mentioning. Um, there's a program to help addicted moms save their babies. Uh, so when it comes to the disease of addiction, it is often easy to miss the person who is suffering, particularly if that person is pregnant. A uh, licensed social worker with Adina Health System, Donna collier Step, has seen it firsthand working with women who are addicted to, the drug, uh, to drugs and pregnant. The Baby Centered Recovery Program serves 13 counties and started five years ago. Most of its participants are IV heroin users. Uh, Kohler Step said the news uh, news of a pregnancy can come with other challenges. And they might say, I'm pregnant, I'm addicted, I don't have a place to live, I don't have food to eat, I might have hep C. She said, help can start with the recovery program through a combination of medical support from two obstetrician gynecologists and tough love. Rules of the group include participation in weekly group meetings, alcohol, uh, alcoholics or narcotics anonymous meetings, sessions with the social worker, and appointments with the nurse. Some of the patients are given uh, Subtex, which is a medication used to treat opiate addiction that does not get them high. Um, Adina nurse Peggy Markham said it's better uh, that what... It's better than what they could. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I'm still not enough awake. Uh, <laughs> uh, she said that it's better than what they could be doing if they were on the street, you know. Yeah. And um, we would know what they're taking when they get it off. The, we wouldn't. Oh God, <laughs> I cannot like <laughs> clearly cannot read today. Hold on a second. Okay. We know what they're taking when they get it off the streets. They have no idea of what's been added uh, to whatever. And a lot of street drugs will put them into early labor and do a lot of things this medication is not going to do, she said. So I I just have to say, as someone who's had a child, um, that I think this is amazing. Like, this is the way that addiction should be treated. If there were more treatment centers like this, I don't think addiction would be nearly as bad. Because putting someone in jail and giving them charges and giving them a record because they're an addict. Taking them away from the one thing that keeps them the one thing they are. Right. I think is one you know, situation that you're setting yourself up for failure. Exactly. You know? And, and you know, it just, if they do become a recovered addict and they stay clean, then at that point they have this record of drug charges and things that they have to deal with and that doesn't make it easy either i mean that kind of challenge could be the reason that someone relapses and starts using again and so i just i feel like this kind of thing is what we need more of um absolutely it's yeah. never going to get better unless we treat the problem instead of the effect uh, after my accident in 2009, uh, well, uh, I don't share it publicly. You know, I, I don't. I, I guess I don't. I, I guess I have shared it publicly, but I don't talk about it until it comes up. You know, I don't really. Um, I'm not a chess beater. I never really have been. Uh, I'm just not good at it. Uh, but you know, um, 2009, I was in a nasty accident. Siobhan, you know a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Me and you have been friends for oh, quite a while. Some time. <laughs> yeah, quite some time, and. You know, um, every day, you know, it doesn't, you don't just go to treatment and then stop, No. you know, or whatever. It's you know. an everyday battle. It's every day, every day you Any wake up. Any kind of addiction. Every, every, every stress that hits you, every, every depressing moment that might be depressing for somebody else, you take that and you multiply it by like 50 you know, mm -hmm. and you throw in the whole, uh, well, you know, um, the, the, you throw that in with what you're talking about and the whole motherly 
you know, uh, this is all I know how to do. A lot of moms, if I'm not mistaken, and, and please chime in if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like when moms are pregnant, uh, you know, watching you through your pregnancy, I feel like when moms are pregnant, there's certain times of their pregnancy where there's nothing else that's pushing them along other than that pregnancy. Like they just, because of the depression, it's a real thing and, and things do get hard. And, and, you know, so I, I mean, you know, it's more than just, I can't fit in my shoes today. Right. You know? And, and so I don't know, I, me as a husband, me and me as a father. Now I watched my wife go through all that and, you know, I, I try to do the best I could for her, you know what I mean? But as a man, you watch a woman go through so many changes and so many things, and it's hard because you can't do anything. You just got to watch. And, you know, but in this situation, you can't, you don't just have to watch. You can act. You can get involved, and you can be a part of it. Let them know, like, you're not, you're not alone. You're not by yourself. Right. Um, you know, and, and look forward to tomorrow support is definitely the key for an addict yeah you know an um, addict will never recover unless they have support there's a take back initiative here in columbus um actually it was yesterday it was yesterday yeah, it was yeah I, I always miss them yeah like well they i know they promote them but they, they only promote them here and there yeah they they i mean they, they don't do, want to oversaturate the subject they do take backs i think it's like two or three times a year and it's yeah. uh most kroger stores participate in it um but it's a prescription take back any prescription it's totally anonymous but if you don't make it to one of the take back days, um, another way that you can dispose safely of medications is using like coffee grounds. Um, oh yeah, yeah, wet yeah. coffee grounds because they'll you know they'll dissolve and uh, into the coffee grounds, and the coffee grounds are something that will destroy it. You know, once it's dissolved. Um, so there are a lot of ways that you can safely dispose of it without having to take it to a take back. You can do you know the the thing is is like you can do. There's all kinds of cool disposal. Don't techniques. flush them down no. the toilet. There's all <laughs> kinds of disposal techniques that you can do with your kids that are cool science experiments, like the uh, the coffee grounds and medication. Right. You can mm -hmm. turn that into a science experiment and you can positively influence your kids instead of you know being like well the pill heads like i've i've really watched i don't know like i've really started to watch myself around my daughter because mm -hmm. i watch her and she's watching me all oh, the yeah. time oh yeah and i'm looking at her and everything you do she will see and she will do if she can and if she can't she will continue to watch you until she can uh, yeah and yeah so i've gotten real mindful about all that fun jazz and uh, mr dave sheet said oversaturate heroin is in the news all the time and that's why people are now uh, uh are how they are now right now you know you know, actually, dude, uh, that's a loaded question. That's a that's a loaded uh, conversation. Um, truthfully, uh, you know, uh, the glory of uh, the glory of being uh, so tight with friends and everybody is that we can all agree to disagree that drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and prescriptions are bad. But you know, the the average, you know, look at the workers' comp. You know industry you know look at the the easy accessible quote-unquote lack of health care if we have such a lack of health care then how are these pills making it to where they're making it to i know that the health care doesn't work for us but it's working for somebody because you know regardless of it I don't think anybody in the state house gives a rat's ass. I don't think anybody. I think the reason why it all came up, honestly, is because a certain number of people started dying. Ohio, it became a big deal. Oh yeah, it became like Walking Dead, Resident Evil kind of shit in Ohio, and all of a sudden, state representatives are like, "Oh, a, tr a true epidemic." Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and I. You know, I agree, Dave, you know, uh, with you, uh, uh, media manipulation. Exactly. That's kind of where I'm going with it. You know, um, Cam Grady goes, and she will. 
Uh, David Gonzalez, my 14-year-old son, is just like that. Everything I do or say around my son, I, I gotta watch. And uh, David Sheets, what fuck are, are t talking, uh, talking pills for? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Whatever, Dave. <laughs> Whatever, Dave. No, like everybody else is in the chat rooms with me. I think Dave just wake and baked too hard this morning. Clearly, he didn't share. Jeez. No. Uh, you know, I just, I don't know, man. I, I think it's bigger than us. You know what Definitely. I mean? Like they, they put it into rotation and then said, "Oh, we're screwing shit up." And then we're like, we got to fix it. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I feel like. I don't know. I, I just feel like we've been uh, pushed around and walked around for so long. Mm. It's 9 o'clock. What do you have, Siobhan? Well, I figured we would take, you know, we got to pay the bills. I know we do. So you kind of ran over that. No, I did. But, I mean, it, it's it, a good topic. It's a justified reason to oh, run yeah. over. So. But uh, I, think we should, uh, I think we should pay some bills, and then we can come back for horoscopes. Sounds good. Good, 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 We'll be right back after this. Get ready with your birthdays. Are you tired of overpriced and overweight plumbers spending hours on a job and costing you hundreds of dollars, only to find out it's going to cost double? Give Calhoun Plumbing a call. Since 1992, the team at Calhoun Plumbing has been loyally serving the homes and businesses of Greater Columbus, Ohio. Have a plumbing emergency? Calhoun Plumbing will come to your rescue 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A messy plumbing problem won't wait or fix itself. What are you waiting for? Someone is standing by to take your call now. Call 614-444-1995. Where you're trusted everything you need all in one plumber. Calhoun Plumbing. Military and seniors save 10% off on service calls and no premium rates for Saturday appointments. For more information, go to CalhounPlumbing.com or call 614-444-1995. That number again is 614-444-1995. The Old Bag of Nails, located in Gahanna at 63 Mill Street off of Hamilton Road and Granville Street in the Creekside Plaza, offers you the best in fried fish, along with mouth-watering soups and salads, and the best sandwiches and steaks in Central Ohio. You're guaranteed to leave satisfied and wanting more. So take it from us at The Score, if you're looking for the best fried fish and the finest burgers and steaks, visit the friendly folks at The Old Bag of Nails, 63 Mill Street in Gahanna in the Creekside Plaza, or give them a call at 614-337-9430. That's 614-337-9430.
How's it going? Good morning, Music Familia. Welcome back to Sunday Morning Meltdown. How's everybody's morning going this morning? Hopefully everybody's waking up and having a good morning. I'm going to give a huge shout-out to Mr. Dave Sheets, uh, Photo Nation AP, handling out all of our logos and our fun stuff for us. I uh, appreciate you, Mr. Dave, for making us look real good and handling all our stuff on Amman Versus on Thursdays. Also, uh, Mr. The look from Siobhan was like to die. Like what? you're gonna, like you're gonna kill me. Look like you were gonna kill me or stab me. <laughs> so uh, it is ten after nine. We're waking up here. You got your horoscopes ready. I hope I you do. guys. I hope you guys are ready for this, man. Get your birthdays in. Let's do it. All right. So for anyone who has a birthday today, happy birthday. Uh, today's horoscope is. A sun Saturn link on your birthday means it's a time to get serious about your role in the world. You were born with a unique set of talents, and now you must consciously use them to build something of lasting value that you will always be remembered for. Well, happy birthday to you. Wow. All righty, let's see here. Uh, I don't uh, get everybody ready for it. All right. Well, I don't see anybody else asking, so I'm just going to go ahead and read a few here. Uh, Jim and I, for myself and my mama, Cam Grady. Uh, according to the planets, you are pl paying too much attention to what other people think and say and not nearly enough to what your own heart is trying to tell you. Turn your focus inward this week and let your inner voice guide you. It knows the way. Well, okay then. Uh, so <laughs> Dave, Dave goes so you talk about me and she wants to stab you cool I see how it is woman <laughs> <laughs> I love you Dave it's cause I miss your woman's boobs <laughs> <laughs> speaking of controversial topics you know boobs <laughs> yeah, yeah no uh, I have a mic can do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. And double standard. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Anyways, so uh, while we're waiting on someone to put their uh, birth date in, how about Virgo for the Ant-Man uh. there? Uh, the upcoming full moon war uh, warns there will be a few raised voices over the next two or three days, but now you are aware of the fact that you can resolve to stay in control of your temper. You don't have to give as good as you get. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. 
This is, you know, that Justin Timberlake song and the Chris Stapleton song. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, say nothing. Yeah, I'm not uh -huh. going to say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? February 4th, Mr. Dave Sheets. On to the next one. All right. Aquarius, Gosh. you will need the support of your family members and other relatives for what you're planning to do in the coming week. So make sure you stay in their good books, even if it means saying things you don't really believe. In other words, be nice, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that's too perfect that is that's like uh, spot on oh yeah oh yeah if natty's awake she's probably looking she's at like him she's like laughing her mm -hmm. ass off oh yeah mm -hmm. good stuff giving him the wifey look yeah <laughs> like i i know that look all too well bro don't worry i got you uh, i got you all right how about uh leo 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 all right uh, you will make your mark on the world over the next few days, but don't make it so deep that you can never go back and ride over it again. <laughs> you can be a bit heavy handed in your methods at times, so try applying a lighter touch. Um, yeah. So, so in, in vehicle speak, use your four wheel drive for deep situations. When shit gets real, <laughs> re when shit gets real, make sure you have a wench and four wheel drive. <laughs> yeah. Oh. For the, let's see here, still nothing. Mm -mm. All right. So for anyone who is a Sagittarius, we haven't read that Everybody in a while. Everybody's hung over from last night's show. Clearly. Uh, so for the Sagittarius out there, you will find it hard not to be impatient this week. You can't understand why certain things are taking so long to accomplish. But the fact is you move twice as fast as most other people do. So you have no option but to wait for them to catch up. Burn. That's kind of like a... <laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, take a breath and take a minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> Chill them out. Exactly. Like sit back, relax. Exactly. <laughs> Go to happysticks.com. That's a good segue. <laughs> Go to happysticks.com. All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll leave this up uh, for now, just in case anybody last minute. The stragglers. Asks. Yeah. But uh, I guess let's move on to. Oh. controversial thing so i wanted to wait till the nine o'clock hour so that we had the most amount of people on here and uh the reason being is because we're gonna open up multiple devices and kind of do a multiple me thing about this because this is a serious topic we want everybody to, to be involved with this um so today we're going to talk about our first controversial topic is going to be uh, <laughs> workplace compliments and the reason why I talk about this is because uh, GMA, Good Morning America, did a segment on Tuesday talking about compliments in the workplace. And Siobhan, you, you caught the tail. I think you said you caught the tail end of it or you um, caught a little bit of I, it. I definitely, I don't know if I caught all of you it. You were listening but to I, it. I did hear, I think, most of it at least. What do you, now, you being a female and working you know, and in the industry, in the music industry, especially. Okay. Oh, yeah. This oh, is yeah. why I want to talk about this topic because the music familia and all the women in it. We have some very beautiful women in the music familia, in the in the community, in our in our our wives, our girlfriends, our merch ladies, our whatever. And go ahead, Siobhan, tell me all about it. I would love to hear your side of this. So for me, I am. I'm actually okay with compliments, um, but, you know, I'm a little older because uh, one of the things on Good Morning America that they found was that the older generation is more okay with compliments. Millennials, however, feel that there is no place whatsoever in the workplace for compliments. You're there to work and that's it and that's what you do. Um, so I don't agree with that because I feel like there should be some sort of personal camaraderie within the workplace because that's that's i mean that's where you spend a, a good majority of your time and your life right and you know you want to feel comfortable in your workplace and you want you you know you want the people that you work with to sort of 
be friends, if you will. Maybe not friends that you go out and have drinks with, but you want them to be friendly with you. You want to be able to have a conversation at lunch with them, you know, in the break room and have a good time and be able to joke and laugh. Or at least I do. Right. And, you know, so if my coworker looks at me one day when I wear a dress that I, you know, that I never do and says, wow, I never see you in something like that. You you look really nice. Right. You know, that to me is totally okay. Like that's going to make me feel good because I, right. I stepped out of my comfort zone and I wore something I'm not normally one to wear. And, you know, someone noticed and said, wow, you, you know, you yeah. look good like that. Right. That's okay. But to come over and put their arm around me or try to grab something and be like, hey, you look good. That's not okay. Well, you no, know, they didn't, they really didn't go that far. They didn't. But I, I'm going to make that extreme, you know, difference to be I've seen clear. It happen, like, though. And even just, I've seen that happen. Though. Right. And even just uh, getting like extra close and the tone of voice changes from, hey, you look nice to, hey, you look nice. Like, even that is not okay. It's all about the context of which it's said and how it's presented. Like, that's what's important. And I think that's where we've lost track of things because of everything going on. Like, the Me Too and, and all of it. Just all of it in general. Yeah, We've lost that sense of personability with each other. And I think that's a big part of the problem. Like, that's just gone. Yeah. We're not personable anymore. Absolutely. I mean, I, I definitely, uh, I, I'd, I'd say, I'd, I'd say I'd venture to say <laughs> that, you know, things, yes, things are different, but that doesn't mean they need to, st- it doesn't mean the media that different. Right. You it, know, it doesn't mean we have to cut off our feelings and emotions so, as humans and, and be basically robots. Right. <laughs> You know, uh, Dave Sheets, he's live in the chat room. Mr. Photo Nation AP himself. <laughs> Millennials he, ma- don't work, though. <laughs> right. You know, which is true. I mean, yeah, yeah. To a certain point. But to, I think yeah. I think they'd be offended. I want to give a good morning to Billy Moore Sr., Mr. Dave Greenberg, Justin Sane. What's going on, man? Rick Anvil. How's it going, man? Danielle Best, Aaron Brenner. Uh, Aaron Benner. How's it going, man? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Morning Meltdown. Talking about controversial topics, man. Compliments in the workplace. I want to hear what you guys have to say, man. Phone lines are open. 614-916-6372. So, I mean, look, the whole thing is, is, you know, they they took an old panel and a young panel. To me, I guess in plain English, they took an old panel and a young panel and they asked the old panel about compliments in the workplace. The old panel of people were established professionals in the work industry, and their take on the compliments was that, you know, it's important for success. Um, certain compliments build growth and, and stability in a prominent employee. You know, how do you make your employee feel good about themselves, or how do you reinforce positive workspace if you can't give a good compliment? You know, and... Um, the millennials' response was, you can give a compliment about my work, just don't say a damn thing about me. Right. And I quote, right. like a very standoffish, negative, I don't want you to say anything about me. Only about my work. Only about my work. All right, great. Well, you're a zombie, and you're not going to get that promotion because you're not personable. Have a great day. Right. You know, like I'm not I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm in the, I'm in a professional industry where I deal with people on a on a day to day basis. And if you're that scathy when you in, a, in a, just a general, then good luck finding a job, because all the people that I know and everybody that I work with are personable people that. To get to know them, to be able to get the work, you have to get the trust, you know. You can't, you can't, it doesn't, it doesn't come by, oh, well, I heard you're good. Like, no, like I heard you're, I heard you're a good sound guy. Yeah. That doesn't mean crap. It came from a referral from somebody else who was like, yeah, he's a good guy. Like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's my dude, whatever, you know, I don't know. In the music industry, it's a very touchy, touchy subject because, you know, I mean, at, at, at 10 PM, I just met you at two, at 2 AM, you're my best friend. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so I mean, there's two hands to that sword. 
uh, Siobhan, you being in the in the the music scene and doing stuff that you've done, um, and 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 in your younger life mm-hmm. doing your past profession, and we won't get into that. Like, you know, what what is your experience as far as compliments and 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 stuff like that in the workplace? I mean, I I have had people compliment me. Um, you know, and it not be offensive, it not be taken the wrong way, but I've also had situations where it is. And, you know, it, it's like I said, it's all about context. It's all about how you present it. It's all about your, your motive behind it. Right. It It's whether or not your motive is to uplift and, you know, help to make better, if you will, a situation, or is it to get something out of it now let me ask you let me ask you this what what do you classify a compliment and what do you classify um a non a a sexual advance or however a a woman would put it like i said it's it's really simple like you know if you were to look at me and say hey siobhan you you look nice today i've never seen you wear pink before you know it suits you well that's a compliment. Yeah. If you were to look at me and say, hey, you look really good in pink with that kind of, you know, tone of voice and just like, that's not a compliment. Gotcha. That's that's borderline harassment. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, it's it's really like you have to know the person, too. And that's a part of it as well. And that's where that person ability comes in. Like you you have to know whether that person, the way that they're saying it, their body language, their, their context, all of those things, like you have to take that into account, obviously, but it, it's really just simply about the way that it's said and put across and, and the demeanor and things of that nature. Like that's how you can know whether it's a compliment or something more. Mr. Jason Smalley says prank call incoming. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, you know, uh, I was like, I don't know if he, I think he, and then he heard the topics. He was like, eh, <laughs> He's like maybe not. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I got the top of uh, the story right here. You know, uh, since the, uh, it's been over a half a year since hashtag me too movement, wow. uh, already in Hollywood and, uh, it's wildfire considered now, uh, leaving most no industry unscathed as hundreds of women came forward with stories of sexual misconduct they've been subject to in the workplace. Uh, in the aftermath of the news uh, post of hashtag Me Too reality that is appended offices across the country, Good Morning America spoke with two generations of people in the workplace, one group in their 20s and one in their 50s, to hear how things have changed. Um, now, this is where it gets real, and I, and I thought that it was quite interesting just, just hearing the back and forth. You know, and then they did one side, the other side, and then brought them into the room for for a whole conversation. And uh, new rules in the workplace. You guys ready for this? Uh, I think we're creating them. Alexis said, a young woman in her 20s said, of the new workplace rules, our society has made a decision to take off our blinders and reevaluate what's acceptable in our culture. We've had rules that have existed, Alexis added, but I think we're deciding to make those more clear. Um, are compliments allowed in a workplace? That's kind of what we're talking about today. A uh, German teacher in his 50s said that sometimes we worry about how compliments um, that we give at work can be misconstrued. At school, German said he saw a fellow teacher coming. Uh, he said, I just passed by, and I said, oh, you look beautiful. Um, because she looked beautiful. And then I said, oh, wait, what did I just say? Did I say it wrong? Did I? How did I say it? Did that, I? And that's it, Ger- like I said. German added, you never know anymore whether his compliment could have been misconstrued as offensive or not. The young group of the most uh, were the most part more uh, adamant that compliments and comments on one's appearance should not be a part of the workplace banter. Um, one went on to say, if you comment to my appearance at work, I don't agree with that. Uh, Padma said, who, who is in her twenties and she goes on to say, really any comment you want to give me, I, I want to be related to my work. She goes on to also say, we don't have to like talk about or physical appearances or how we think someone looks, Padma added. There are other ways to relate. 
uh, Nomi in her 20s said the compliments are acceptable at work as long as they are friendly and never cross the line past friendship. Uh, Robin in her 50s, however, said that she believes compliments are one of the things that create rapport. And, and rapport uh, is something that is really important to solidifying and improving human relationships and being involved, Robin said. Uh, then two groups came together to talk. The, gen the generationally divide became very apparent. And I, I don't know. When I was watching it, Siobhan, it looked... It, it just... It was, yeah. The anger on the millennial's face. I wouldn't say so much anger, just like there was very clearly a difference of opinions. Yeah, Robin was like, direct question. She's like, do you really think people should not give compliments? And uh, Padma re maintained, if you just meet someone or someone who is a manager or supervisor, I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, and Raphael, who's in his 50s, responded, however, sometimes a compliment is just a compliment. If somebody says, nice shirt, I think I, I, got, a, I, I, think I got on a nice shirt, Raphael said. Uh, Joanna Lippman, the author of uh, That's What She Said, uh, What Men Need to Know and Women Need to Tell Them About Working Together, said that 20-somethings hold more anger over what they see as unfair. Uh, younger people have an anger, Lippman said, and particularly very young women. There's an anger there about injustice, a constant injustice um, of being wronged. They're really focused on not just male versus female, Lipton added, but they're looking at the double bind, um, the, the triple bind, and women face if they belong to another underrepresented group. Uh, they're highly focused on that in a way, and the older people are not, because the older people are established and they don't focus on little things, quote-unquote, the little things. I'm not saying it's not important. Um, mansplaining in a workplace. You know, uh, for example... Are you the person who wants to be politically correct uh, and kind and stay at the, the wayside? Um, Alan in his 50s, however, acknowledged that it's belittling to be interrupted. It is. And, and however, I apologize to you on a, on a daily basis. I'm Italian, ladies and gentlemen. Can't be helped. <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. I'm going to post a story up there. And let you guys have at it. I'm curious to see what all the comments are and what everybody has to say about it because it is a trending topic uh, currently right now, and uh, definitely interested in hearing what people have to say about it. So, I don't know. I mean, you think? What do you think about millennials, Siobhan? We've had this conversation. I just I don't even go there. Yeah. I just don't even go there. It's easier that way. Well, you know. All right, for the people. And and I. Uh, I offend less people that way, so uh, we'll just well, not go there. This is supposed to be the non butter show. Well, you know, I I just, you know, I've said it before. I typically, as far as I'm concerned, millennials have no clue. Like, they're just, they're clueless about what living really is. Because yeah. Because living through a device is not living. Like, devices have their purposes. Don't get me wrong. Like, my phone, it has its purposes, but I don't live on my phone. I don't live on my iPad. I don't live on my computer. Good morning, Justin Edwards. I live Edwards. in the world. <laughs> Good morning, Crystal Ortiz. Good morning, Joey Adkins. Um, Billy Moore Sr. says it depends on the individual. Uh, if she spends 60 minutes to look at her best every day, it, um, it would be seen that uh hold on one second let me grab that it would seem like they would want the compliment if you take exactly. if you take time to look good you should get the compliment right i don't know i'm curious to see what the music family has to say and what people who watch the show afterwards have to say man definitely com comment in below and and feel free to weigh in on that but uh let's see justin edwards said dread engine uh Top on, uh, hopped on board. Ah, nice. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate you. Shout out to Dread Engine, man. They had to travel. They took a road trip all the way. I, can't, I don't remember. Sam told me where they were going, and I, I think I was H that time when we were talking, so I didn't get a chance to talk about that. I'm stealing that from Dave. I'm H. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. What we got coming up, Siobhan? Um, well... The next controversial topic we have mm -hmm. is uh, that Madison local schools 
the board voted to allow arming the teachers and the staff. Newport, Kentucky. That's where they ended up going. Wow. That's far away. That is far. That's not close. Good God. Yeah, so Middletown, Ohio, uh, the Madison Local School District Board voted unanimously Tuesday night to allow district teachers and staff to carry weapons as part of a plan implemented uh, to to implement a, sc- a school safety training program operated by a pro-gun lobby group. Uh, the vote came more than two years after 14-year-old Austin Hancock brought a gun into the cafeteria at Madison Junior Senior High School and shot two classmates. Two others were injured by uh, shrapnel or while trying to get out of the way. Uh, the Those people must be permitted under law, Ohio law, to carry a concealed handgun and must undergo response to active shooter training and recertify every year prior to being authorized to convey and or possess deadly weapons or dangerous ordinance in a school safety uh, zone of the Madison local school district, according to the language in the resolution. Uh, district officials said the resolution is just the first step in a plan to participate in the facility administrator uh, safety training and emergency response program, which is a branch of the Buckeye Firearms Association, according to its website. The program consists of 26 hours of training in armed response, crisis management, and emergency medical aid, officials said in an announcement Wednesday. The safety of each and every child in this community has to be our district's highest priority. Uh, board president Dave Finch said in a written statement, I hope our community understands that the fast, uh, FASTER program is so much more than just about arming staff in our schools. The training that uh, the training that is part of the program will make our district more sa- <coughs> <Excuse me>. uh, <laughs> more safe and our staff better prepared to handle an emergency situation. Uh, the Buckeye Firearm Association is a nonprofit that lobbies lawmakers to pass program legislation and provide training and other resources for gun owners. Training and certification could take months, so whether anyone would be armed before next school year is not clear. Uh, Madison Township residents were split on the board's decision. I'm opposed to the idea of teachers having guns in school, Bill Eisen said. Eisen has lived in Madison Township nearly 40 years. His two children graduated from the high school, as did one grandson. Another grandchild of his is currently a junior there. His d- he said the decision was made without public comment. Just because someone wants to carry a gun in school is no reason that we should have people carrying guns in our school, he said. Uh, I kind of second that. I mean, you know, I get, I get that. Uh, give me a second here to go to the next page. So of the that, that, that's fine. They'll give me a chance here, real quick, to get caught up. Um, so uh, Justin Edwards said it's an hour and a half away. Kentucky is. Uh, yeah. Crystal Ortiz commented. She said, "I love compliments. Just don't touch without permission." Exactly. And your mom uh, goes ahead and says uh, it comes down to stopping at the compliment and not taking it further. That is part of the issue. People want to push and see how far they can go with more than a compliment. It's so true. And, you know, I, 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 I've seen it firsthand, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, truthfully. Absolutely. You know. But, I mean, but there are those of us now, listen, I, I want to speak to the old-fashioned guys out there, all right? Because I'm very, very old-fashioned, and my wife will tell you I'm very old-fashioned. Even though I'm technologically smart, I'm pretty old-fashioned. And I... I try to make sure that, you know, you show respect, you show compliments, you 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 pay respect and all that. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Siobhan. Sorry about that to go back to that. I just want to make sure I get everybody caught up on that. So No problem. The uh, school. All right. So um, Chris Richardson said he thinks it's a good idea. He's a 2015 high school, uh, Madison High School graduate, and he said he happened to be in the cafeteria the day that Hancock shot his classmates. Yeah. I mean, if it ever happens again, we'll have more people that can protect us, he said. Uh, The movement to arm teachers resurfaced after the February 14th math shooting at the Florida high school that left 17 dead and 15 hospitalized. Uh, President Donald Trump suggested offering bonuses to teachers who carry firearms just days after the shooting. These people are cowards. They're not going to walk into a school if 20% of the teachers have guns. It may be 10% or it may be 40%. And what I'd recommend doing is the people that do carry, we give them a bonus. We give them a little bit of a bonus, Trump said. They'll frankly feel more comfortable having the gun anyway, but you give them a little bit of a bonus. 
Uh, Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones also publicly advocated for arming teachers. He offered a host of free concealed carry classes for area school teachers. About 100 educa educators participated in the class. Um, he, his tweet here, I'm going to offer free concealed and carry classes free to teachers in Butler County. Uh, limited number details coming soon online. Also training on school shootings. Uh, teachers, however, are not in favor. Not all teachers, however, are in favor of carrying a firearm in the classroom. Ludlow Independent School Superintendent uh, Mike Busher said officials need to consider anything they can do to ensure the safety of students, but he said he's not sure if arming the teachers is the best approach. Teachers are inherently coached to be nurturers, and when you have more guns in schools, that can be a difficult situation. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong, Brewster said. I think it's something we all have to look at from our own situations. Don Leiber, a principal of Moyer Elementary School, said school officials need to arm themselves with the right tools in terms of preparation, not with weapons. In Ohio, whether teachers can carry firearms is a decision for each school district. Uh, Edgewick... Edgewood City Schools in Trenton adopted a concealed carry policy in 2013, according to the Dayton Daily News. So, I mean, it, it you know, recently with the school shooting in Florida, it's been something that has been big in the news about arming teachers and arming school staff. And, you know, this is that I know of only like the second or third Ohio school district to decide Less to than five. arm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's not five. very many. You know, so, you know, I'm curious what everybody has to say about it. It's a very controversial topic. Justin I Edwards, mean, uh, he goes, Ludlow isn't uh, also isn't the best example to speak to. LOL. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. Billy Moore Sr. says, I think teachers uh, could be armed if they want to. Uh, training is very important and should be licensed by government um, after being tested and regulated. Yeah, I think I think there's definitely a way in which it should be. I mean, it should be more strict than just what it is to get your Ohio concealed carry license because that's kind of a joke. Crystal Ortiz says, "I have kids. Uh, my opinion is no, no, no. Teachers, guards, or officers never know who is gonna who's gonna panic and or lose it. Y you know, I mean, there there definitely is that. There's a way in which I I can say." that if I could trust that the teacher would be able to do what needs to be done in that situation, having a gun, then by all means, like if they've, if they served in the military and they have that kind of try like that, that as I'm long okay, as you know, PTSD doesn't kick in and right. they do more than that. Right. But I mean, there's that way in which like, I almost feel like having, you know, special duty officers is a better option because this is what they do on a daily and this is what they're they're paid to do and then they're used to doing you know a teacher is a teacher so can i let me let me shed some light on this real quick um mr dave sheets he says oh lord i think cops shouldn't carry guns in, in, in her opinion and and i i, I mean that's right. what dave she yeah so <laughs> I, i'm not I'm, i'll let that go <laughs> i'm not gonna fight for dave um then all guns need to be taken from everyone said Dave. Uh, Justin Edwards says, I've been in the service for 10 years in, in the city of Covington. Uh, I know if you're expecting... Uh, I'm going to make sure I read this properly. And you're expecting fast response time. It varies. Really having teachers with guns, it's more of a deterrent than an actual use. Right. And, and you know, I mean, I... I First of all, thank you for your service, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Sir, I appreciate you for your service. Um, you know, it, it, it's... Oh, man. Look, the thing is, the teachers have to worry about paying for their own books. They have to worry about pencils and supplies, and they have to worry about so many things. And these teachers also, mind you, deal with mentally, mentally challenged kids every day. Every day. And so not only are we talking about, all right, here, deal with this stressful situation— here, deal with this hostage stressful situation. Manage your disabled, manage your disabled kid. I have to, I have to just real quick. Go Dave ahead. says, we just need to put these people from the military who can't find jobs to patrol school zones. I fully agree I with that. That's that. freaking brilliant, Dave. Yeah. Give them a job doing something that they know how to do and that they're, they're probably very good at. Absolutely. You yep. see some guys walking around, full army gear, like... 
tell me you're going to come and, and shoot up a school for that. I he, posted at every door. Absolutely not. He said then, uh, he said, uh, cops shouldn't carry guns in her opinion. He said, then all guns need to be taken from everyone. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, uh, Crystal says, absolutely, Ant-Man. Uh, good morning, Felicia, Nadine Evans. Thank you for joining in and hanging out with us. Um, you know, it's definitely a topic that I feel like a lot of parents are going to be 50-50 on. And I feel like there's going to be parents that aren't even going to acknowledge the topic. They're just going to pull their kids out of the school. I, I could definitely see Like, they're, not, the they're just going to say, er, I'm not messing with this. I'm done. Like, F this, I'm done. You know, and, and I, I, I feel like, so the thing is, is we talk about money in school, Siobhan. We talk about all this. Where is all, this is all going to cost money. And unfortunately, we're all going to have to pay for this one way or another. And this is a result. This is why we can't have nice things, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we can't have nice things. You know, and I'm, I'm wondering how, what, when, and if, like, you know, the five W's of it. Like, what, uh, man, my daughter just turned one. I don't know that we'll actually have to pay for it. Like, I think it's something where because it's a choice of each teacher, I think that that's on them. I think that if they decide to go and do it, that is their choice. I think the, the bonus... The school is not paying. The bonus that Trump is talking about... But I don't think that's actually going to happen. No, hold on, hold on. I think it's a great idea. I think he's on to something. I think, I think the orange pumpkin is on to something. Really, honestly, what I'm thinking, like, he could do... You know, like, Hazmat has the... You know, if you, if you, if you work for Hazmat, if you work for a crime scene, you get paid... Depending on the spill. And if it's a hazardous spill, you get hazard pay. So why don't we hook them up with hazard pay? You know? Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, Justin Edwards says, uh, I would say it's going to be a grant from the federal government. Uh, you know, I, probably that would be an interesting conversation in, in uh, a town hall meetings. Because, you know, there's those arrogant assholes that show up. You know, I, I, I love to call them because typically they're like the same. They're like hand in hand. You know, when you go to a show and you hear the one drunk at 3 a.m. Free bird! And the band's not even a free bird band. Like they don't even they don't even play that kind of music. And they're like, oh, what is a free bird? And then they stumble out the door and fall down. I feel like those are the guys. Some of those people come to the town hall meetings. Only they come sober. And and then it's a big old debate back and forth. And, and nothing gets done because it's just a pissing contest. Right. You know, I feel like that's how I feel about uh, some of the neighborhood meetings that, that go on sometimes. Neighborhood meetings are like, let's come have some cookies and some cupcakes. And, yep. Hey, Sally, got a great yard. That's awesome. Let's not talk about the break-ins and all the stuff that's going on. So, Siobhan, what, being a mom, are you going to let, if you find out Mazikeen is going to be going to school, how do you... Are you going to have a conversation with the teacher? How do you have that conversation? I mean, if if she ends up in a school, if, if Columbus City Schools ends up allowing teachers to wear, you know, carry guns, then as a parent, I personally would want to go, if her teacher was one that had a gun, I would personally walk into that classroom, look at her teacher and go, so you have a concealed carry. I have one too and I do training and I shoot my gun regularly and I want to know that you're going to be able to protect my child and not be someone who the gun gets taken away and then it gets used on my kid. Wow. Like I don't care. I'll have that. Con I, I have no problem yeah. going to someone and looking them in the face and go, okay, you're supposed to protect and take care of my child for the, whatever it is, six, eight hours that they're here every day. Um, I want to know that you can do that. Do you think teachers are going to end up start having like body cams just like the officers do so that they can film what's going on? I don't in think it's so much that teachers will have body cams. I mean, most schools have cameras in them at this point. Yeah. Anyway, I think it will be a case of where every classroom will have a camera in it. Yeah. That will be nah. in a corner that will take the whole like I think that if enough school districts end up passing the ability for teacher, like I think that will be what ends up happening in the future, short, you know, short term after. Yeah. Like I think it will be a case of okay, you know, after the first time that it, and and that's what will probably happen. As sad as it is, is the first time someone goes into a school where a teacher is carrying and ends up being, you know, 
a thing and sh- get shot or whatever, we'll end up with schools and all, yeah. you know, schools having cameras everywhere, everywhere except for the bathrooms. You think the, you think the, uh, do you think that the metal detectors are a joke? I mean, because like everybody talks about having the metal detectors. And there's and a possibility that that may be in the future with too. With the 3D scanners, with the, you know. You know, I don't know about the 3D scanners. I think that's a little overkill, but I think that metal detectors in schools are definitely not a horrible idea. Did you read the story about the kid in Arizona that outfitted his drone with a twenty two? I didn't. Yeah. So yeah, I'll send you that story. So what yeah. else you got for us? Um, well, we don't have a lot of time left, so Love News today is a slightly longer story, so I'll just kind of give you guys a synopsis of it, and I'll throw that up on the uh, Facebook page for you guys, so you can go and take a look if you so desire. Um, there's some pictures and a video with it, but uh, basically, there is a, a sex club in <laughs> New York that is specifically millennial only. Specifically millennial yes. only. Yes. Uh, so it is called the uh, NSFW, which stands for New Society for Wellness. Um, and it is uh, run by a 35 year old. <laughs> Uh, and he, he runs, you know, one of the most exclusive millennial only sex clubs in New York city. Wow. And it's, yeah. So, uh, so I will throw that up there. They have about 700 members. Um, there's like 300 people on the waiting list and more than 9,000 other applicants that didn't make the cut. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) average age is 28 and, uh, the criteria is an attractive, successful, avid social media users. Uh, Justin so, Edwards, he goes, yes. Oh, I was excited until you said millennial only. Right, right. <laughs> so the membership fee is a one-time payment of $96, while each sex party carries an extra cost ranging from 30 to 150 uh, So, yeah. So it's, a, it's definitely an interesting uh, article, and I highly suggest <laughs> anyone who's even slightly interested in it uh, go and take a look and read it. They shut down Craigslist um, for this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the guy is <sighs> clearly an entrepreneur. I'll give him oh, that. Like, boy. he is clearly an entrepreneur. Um, but yeah, you know, so, I mean, we have Princeton. They have this. <laughs> Justin goes, he goes, I'm telling you, this is proof. We're going through the sexual revolution again. 2016 till now. It's just history repeating itself. I'm like, yeah, you know, I totally agree. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, I... It's, it's kind of like millennial prostitution. <laughs> I mean, because you got to pay extra for... I, I mean, I don't know. Like, he is... So, he says, I got tired of selling shoes and handbags and beauty things that people didn't need. Uh, and uh, that was of his uh, fashion marketing days. And he said, I wanted to sell things that make people happy, like sex. Yeah. I mean... So, you yeah. know. Justin says, uh, he commented what you were just saying. He goes, this is the hippie movement just with a different name. Uh, yeah, I mean, in a sense, but I mean, he is very selective. He says yeah. if a guy applies and says, I just want to have sex with as many girls <laughs> as possible, that's not someone that they want there, so they don't get yeah. in. I can't believe, oh, you know, I don't know. That's awesome. Well, read the story. So, Let us know what you think, man. Thank you, Siobhan, for yes, that. That's yeah. awesome. You know, had to had to do something really uh, crazy because we hadn't done it in a while. So, <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, that, 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 that got meets the, the bill. They got the <laughs> yeah, they got the bill sent all the way to Congress. Uh, Jeez. And 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 just so you know, I have not actually watched the video that goes with this article. So yeah. make sure your children are not around when you watch this. Uh, yeah, just just make sure. Good morning, Mr. Brandon. I'm Seymour. gonna I'm gonna throw an explicit content label on this. <laughs> So we got douchebag criminals coming up. We got nine minutes left. Thank you guys. Everybody that's been coming in and hanging out with us, man. Share the video. Let everybody know that we have Sunday Morning Meltdown every Sunday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wake up with us with a little bit of music, a little bit of local support, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and uh, just a sign of local support. We got douchebag criminals coming up. That's the favorite part of the show. Everybody loves that part. Um, But uh, I got a special commercial from Calhoun Plumbing. Make sure you guys give them a call, man. Family owned and operated Calhoun Plumbing, drain and sewer cleaning, calhounplumbing.com. Give them a call, 614-444-1995. Let them know Ant-Man sent you. You guys have a awesome couple minutes. We'll be right back with Douchebag Criminals. It's about to get really, really different in here.
Like, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, Siobhan. The Deuce Bay Criminals today, a uh, homeowner um, and a man who's stupid and somebody in Jacksonville. Oh, boy. So we'll be right back after this, guys. Are you tired of overpriced and overweight plumbers spending hours on a job and costing you hundreds of dollars only to find out it's going to cost double? Give Calhoun Plumbing a call. Since 1992, the team at Calhoun Plumbing has been loyally serving the homes and businesses of Greater Columbus, Ohio. Have a plumbing emergency? Calhoun Plumbing will come to your rescue 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A messy plumbing problem won't wait or fix itself. What are you waiting for? Someone is standing by to take your call now. Call 614-444-1995 for your trusted everything you need all in one plumber. Calhoun Plumbing. Military and seniors save 10% off on service calls and no premium rates for Saturday appointments. For more information, go to CalhounPlumbing.com or call 614-444-1995. That number again is 614-444-1995.
Shotguns right there. Good morning, Music Familia. Welcome to a Sunday Morning Meltdown. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. It's at the end of the show. Douchebag Criminals time. I grabbed the Douchebag Criminals this time, Siobhan. All righty. And uh, the first one, do you ever have those friends they call Cheeto Fingers? Those friends that, you know... <laughs> reason why I'm asking is because in Moreau, Louisiana, over the weekend, a homeowner finds a naked intruder in her bathtub eating Cheetos. Police in Louisiana say a woman came home to discover a naked stranger in her tub eating her Cheetos while taking a bath. A Monroe police affidavit says 29-year-old Evelyn Washington was arrested on burglary and property damage charges. The Fort Worth Star-Telegram reports that a responding officer found a full tub of water and a plate of food along with a half-eaten bag of Cheetos and a half-eaten Cheeto laying on the side of the tub, belonging to the victim on the toilet next to the tub. <laughs> Washington wow. told the homeowner and police that an unknown male had told her to, uh, to break into the house. Just flat out was like, break into that house. And police found a tall ice chest under a broken window. It's unclear if she has a lawyer or not, but one thing's for sure. She's definitely caught finger-handed. <laughs> Our second douchebag criminal, this lovely bundle of joy. This gentleman, Delray police say that they found Stephen Shapiro in a Fort Lauderdale rehab center. He said he was recovering from back surgery when detectives played surveillance camera video showing the Illinois native walking through area stores clad in a Chicago Cubs t-shirt. He admitted that he'd bought $1,800 worth of items using credit cards he'd stolen from his landlord. So this gentleman basically got injured because he went with stolen credit cards to Walmart or said store purchased the TV, and he hurt his back while hanging it in his living room. That's karma so he went, best. Yeah, so he went to the hospital, and one of the items that he uh, later, the police later found, was a, uh, an attempted mounted TV that was on his bedroom wall. It's probably how I blew out my discs, he told detectives. Uh, Shapiro, 56, <laughs> was booked Monday into the Palm Beach County Jail. He was charged with fraud, dealing in stolen property, grand theft, and illegal use of credit cards. He remains in jail today in lieu of a $21,000 bond. His next court hearing is set for May 3rd. According to the Delray Police Report, the 60-year-old woman told detectives that starting November 11th, she'd rented Shapiro a bedroom inside her home near Lake Ida Road. She said she'd always arranged for him to watch her home while she went out of town for two weeks for Thanksgiving or what have you to travel to holidays. And uh, she said that she she left some credit cards in the drawer in her kitchen. And on November 18th, the woman told detectives the fraud department at Best Buy called about suspicious purchases and the store credit card. She said when she returned to Delray Beach, she found several pieces of jewelry missing from her home and found several power tools that were determined to have been bought at Home Depot with her store credit card. Police later found on November 15th, Shapiro pawned uh, for $100 uh, a 14-carat ring that the woman identified as a family heirloom. What a douche. Yeah, and the report says that uh, Shapiro also went on to rob a couple other nursing homes and a few other places as well. Wow. Man, you are a bastard. <laughs> 
And uh, let's see, the last douchebag criminal of our day here. This lovely woman, Jacksonville woman, accused of reckless driving DUI on Interstate Construction Zone. So this teen right here, she's in a Mini Cooper going 106 miles an hour. Wow. Wait, and how old is she? She's a teenager, not given an age. Ah, They're not giving an age. That means she's under 16, most likely. 106 miles or, an hour. Or under seven, De 17. Uh, yeah. Deadly senior hit skip. Wow. Jacksonville woman faces multiple charges, including DUI, after police say she tried to speed through an active construction zone early Tuesday. At approximately 12.15 a.m., an officer was conducting a rolling roadblock at a construction zone in I-95 northbound at University Boulevard when a white four-door car passed all traffic. The car, which was being driven inside, it was an emergency lane, had passed three police officers with their emergency equipment activated. And the officer reported the vehicle traveling uh, at the time, 60 miles an hour, it passed patrol officers and accelerated to upwards of 100 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone as it pulled away from the roadblock, uh, leaving SUVs in the dust. According to the officer, the driver was speeding toward construction workers. The officer began to pursue the car, and as the report says, the car accelerated to 110 as the officer pursued the driver. The car stopped because construction equipment was blocking the road. An officer approached the car, opened the door to find identified a uh, identified 24-year-old woman sitting in the driver's seat. Um, she actually it's a fake ID that she had. It was a 20? It was a, of, of course, yeah. yeah. And uh, man, this is crazy. So it, it's it goes on and it, it's quite quite lengthy. So I'm gonna actually copy this in there. I'm gonna throw it in to our douchebag criminals portion of the live show it's right there in the bottom so you guys can check it out crazy stuff man <laughs> what's the world coming to siobhan it's crazy um so i know we're past time but i really quickly i do want to read this article for everybody i'm sure everybody heard about the pit bull that attacked the person on the subway um so there's a specific line in this is why i want to read this so the pit bull's owner blames the victim for the subway attack uh, the cur collared, uh, collared for assault uh, after his service dog pit bull chomped down on a subway strap officer, uh, blamed the victim as he was let out of a police station Thursday. She attacked me first, you will see, barked Ruben Ricano, 53, as he was let out of the Manhattan Transit Robbery Division. It was on a leash. Uh, Ricano and his dog were on the number four train at the Wall Street Station around 4.25 p.m. last Friday when the pit bull... Uh, went nuts on another rider, clamping its jaws on the girl's foot and thrashing its head wildly. A video, which went viral this week, shows the rider screaming at Ricano to command his dog to let go, but he doesn't appear to do much to help. He was charged with assault and reckless endangerment, police said. Cops said the dog is a service dog, but it's unclear what the service animal was trained to perform. Uh, Ricano and his dog have uh, long been a nuisance, according to police source, who dealt with 311 complaints about him. He was notorious amongst his neighbors. We had to warn him multiple times about the crazy dog, the source said. Every time we went over there, uh, we would have to deal with that dog. Former neighbor, uh, neighbor Patrick Lopez said, It's true that, the dogs, uh, that dogs mirror their owner's personalities, and Ricano drove his pooch nuts. The dog was bugging out all the time because of him, though. Uh, people were scared of the dog because the energy the guy gave off made the dog crazy, he said. I wish I was there to see him get arrested. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so true. It's so true. The dog is going to play off of what the owner does. Yep. And it is not the dog's fault. And God, I hope that they don't put this poor dog to sleep just get him a new owner if I would, no you know the, the i mean um yeah i just unfortunately that's not how the system works it's not un unfortunately um but police say that the animal is in the care of uh Ricano, uh his family and he's awaiting arraignment in manhattan criminal court thursday evening uh mta chairman joe l uh joe la Jolla, uh, encouraged people to speak up if they see a non-service dog not enclosed in the subway. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to read that because that this guy clearly understands that the animal's behavior is based off of the person who owns it. 
I mean, like he says, it was on a leash. Like clearly this guy doesn't actually care about this dog. Yeah. Obviously. But it's just unfortunate that it's a pit bull. Um, as everyone knows, we we have a pit bull here, the studio pit. Yeah. Yep. Um, he unfortunately came from a situation like that. His previous owner was abusive and we rescued him. And he is one of the sweetest dogs in the world now because we love him and cherish him and take care of him the way that he should be. And he has never attacked anyone. It's all about the way they're taken care of. Just come, uh, but now, let me second this. Now he is protective uh, yeah. of his territory. Yeah. yeah. But. As, as your brother has found out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't just walk into the studio. Yeah. But. Yeah. You know, there is there is a process with him. It's it's he goes outside and then comes in and meets people. But you know what? Like, I, I don't care, man. My biggest thing is I'll, I'll say it live on my show. I don't care from here to Australia, all the way to the UK. I love my dog like I love my family. And if you think you're going to harm my family, I'm going to protect my family with my life for whatever I need to do to protect exactly. my life. And I don't think that. You know, I, I think they're shitty owners, not shitty dogs. Exactly. You know, come down, push, come to shove. Yeah. So but there, there's our animal PSA for the week. Word. And your mom <laughs> says, Thor, we love him. Yes. Yes, we do. All right, everybody. We love you, Music Familia. Thank you guys so much for being part of the show. We love all you guys, man. Don't, don't forget, every Sunday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., mark your calendars. We have the events all over the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash Music Familia Productions. Like the page, share it, join the Music Connection. Siobhan has worked her ass off at musicfamiliaproductions.com as well. So I will have, uh, uh, actually, I will put it in there. Production.com. I normally have Siobhan do it, but she's busy. She's finishing I, up some things. I, I am. So, I'm sorry. I apologize. But anyway, I want to give a huge shout out to Photo Nation AP, uh, our sponsor uh, for Ant Man Versus, and all of our graphic design work for MFP. I want to give a huge shout out to Dreadlock Designs uh, for handling the, the Sunday morning meltdown logo. Absolutely. And our Sunday morning stuff. Um, you know, we work locally, and I want to give a huge shout out to Calhoun Plumbing as well, man. I uh, love you guys. Much love. If you guys know a local business that deserves to be heard and deserves local advertising, send them my way. I would love to sit down and work with them. Also, we have affiliate marketing, Siobhan. Oh, yes. So we're going to be talking about that next week. The plan comes in on Tuesday, so I can't divulge the plan. Right. But uh, It's coming. It's coming. Oh, yeah. And we have to go to the joint today, too, on high. Yes. Yeah, they're under new management. Yes. So everyone go check it out and see what changes they've made. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Be watching for some video and some fun stuff for them today. Um, and uh, have a great rest of the week, everybody, man. Siobhan, thank you for all your hard work. Absolutely. And uh, have a great Sunday, everybody. Yay! It's sunny out. It is it is going to be nice. It's just going to be a little chilly, so make sure you bundle up. Billy Smore Sr. is going to see Infinity War. Nice. He should take us. Let me know how it is, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> you should just take us, Dad. We're available. <laughs> All right, see you guys.